Hello everyone, Arash Jafarzadeh here with a lesson on Microsoft Office PowerPoint 2013. PowerPoint's a really great tool to use to create presentations for your students, for faculty, for you know a meeting, anything that you need to make your presentation more interesting, more dynamic, and interactive. So let's take a look and see how it can help us out. First thing is when you open up Microsoft PowerPoint, the first thing you'll see is this screen here. And in here, it shows me my recent documents on the left. I can choose from a whole list of templates down here, or I can just create a blank presentation. Now, this is really useful because I can do a search up here for a theme or a template online by just typing in, you know, what I'm looking for. Let's say I want to look up something for nature. I can type in nature here, press enter and it'll give me all of the templates and themes that relate to nature down here. Now there's a lot of them and I can narrow it down. Let's say I'm looking for something in education. Well I can go to the education category that appeared on the right and in here we can see all of the presentations that have something to do with education. I can choose the one I like. I can preview it by clicking right where it says more images and you can see it shows me all the different types of slides that I can find on this particular category. It also shows me who created the, the uh, template as well. But for this lesson, let's just create a basic one. So I went back to home and I'm just going to choose this ion template here. It lets us choose the color scheme we want to use. Let's say I want to use blue. Again, I can click on these arrows here to see all the different types of slides that will be in this template and if I'm happy with it I can click create. On the left side you can see that there is a thumbnail of my slide and on the right side is the actual slide. In here I can click and add the title to my presentation so let's say I want to call it cats and I can add a subtitle our line friends. There we go. Uh, the next thing we want to do is create some new slides. So I can go up here to where it says new slide and click the little down arrow and choose the type of slide that I want. This one's a blank slide with nothing in it, but there are ones that have pre-made text boxes in them. Well, what does that mean exactly? Let's say I created this new slide here. Each of these boxes with the little outline around them are called a text box. This text box is set for my title, so the font is kind of big, and I can type in, you know, overview or something. And on the bottom, there's another text box. Now, this one is a little different. First of all, uh, you can see that I can automatically start typing in bullets. So I can say, you know, introduction. And then let's say the second slide would be you know, general information or something. And then the next one could be diet and habitat. So you can start populating your text box just like that. I can resize my text box by clicking and dragging these little anchor points in or out. Notice that the text box, when I click, uh, click on them, it has an outline, but the outline is dotted. What this dotted outline means is that it's transparent. So if I click off of it, you won't see the actual box there. Now I can easily change the layout of this slide as well. What I would do is I'd go up here to where it says layout, click here, and I can change it. Originally we had chosen title and content, but let's say I changed my mind and I want to do two content. When I click on that, it automatically resized this uh, first content placeholder, this text box, and made another one on the right side. Now you'll notice these particular text boxes or the content placeholders have these little icons inside them. And they're a very easy way to add a table, a graph, smart objects, pictures, online pictures, and videos. We're gonna look at those later on this lesson as well, but let's just say I want to add a quick picture here right from where I am. Well, I can easily do that by going here to, let's say, online pictures, And I can do a search in office.com. I can do a Bing image search. Or on the OneDrive, if you have that connected, we're not going to cover that in this lesson. 
But let's say I go to office.com and I want to do a search for cat. And there are all the pictures that I can use of cats in here. So let's say I want to use this one here. I'll double click that and there's my cat. Now you'll notice that it's kind of small so the resolution might be low which means that the quality is not all that great. If I resize it there's a possibility that it's going to look pixelated but in this case no it looks like it's vector so we're good. Okay great. Now if you didn't like the quality of the image you can just right click it go over to change picture and then choose another picture again. I can choose from my computer here or from office clip art once again. So there's that. I have my picture, I have my overview. Now let's say I want to change this up. The, the bullets are too small. So what I can do is highlight this section, go up here, and I can change the font if I choose to, or I can change the size. These two allow me to go up in size or down in size by clicking it. So rather than, let's say, going to 20, I can click on the up arrow here, and it takes it to 20 or the down arrow to go back to 18. So I'll just increase the size here a few times. Let's see, it looks like 28 looks pretty good. I'll choose that and we're all set. So I have my first slide and my second slide. Now before we go any further in this section, what if I want to play my show? I want to take a look at what I have so far. Well, I would go up here to the slideshow tab, click, and then click from beginning. And what this will do is it'll start the slideshow from the beginning. The shortcut to do this is at the F5 key on your keyboard. So you can see it shows the first slide. I can click or I can press a, any button on my keyboard to move on to the next slide. Also on the bottom left you can see that I can go forward and back here and we're going to get to these presentation tools in just a second. So let's say I just want to go to the next slide. I'll click and there's my second slide. I click again, it's the end of the show, click the exit, and I'm back to PowerPoint once again. Let's go back to home. Now I haven't covered this quite yet, but up here we have what's called the ribbon. When I click on each of these individual tabs, it shows me at a glance what they can do. So for now we are in the home tab, which is located in the ribbon. So let's say I want to create another slide. I'm going to go down here to title and caption this time. And I'll write my title. It was introduction. Introduction. And uh, let's resize this one. I'll click and drag the anchor up and resize this one to be larger. You'll also notice when I hover around the edge that I get these four arrows. That allows me to click and move it somewhere. If I'm not happy with where I put it, I can just press Control Z on my keyboard to undo what I did or go up to the top here and click this undo button and it will undo what I did just previously. But I would start getting used to using keyboard shortcuts because they really can save you time. Control Z is a shortcut for that. Now I want to add some text. Now rather than waste our time by typing a whole bunch of random text here, I'm going to go online and grab some text really quick. There's a really cool site that I use when I'm creating templates and things like that called Lipsum. So I go to Lipsum.com and in here I can set you know how many paragraphs I want, how many words I want. Let's say I want to do it by words and I want something with 40 words. So I'll click 40, type in 40, click generate and there is my little paragraph. I can highlight it by clicking and dragging my mouse over it right click it to pull up my little menu and click copy. Now when I click copy it's going to copy that text I just highlighted. Let's switch back to PowerPoint and in here I can right click and click paste. And there is the text I had just copied a second ago. One thing I'll note also is I can use a shortcut on my keyboard to do the same thing. Let's press enter. I'm going to go back and show you the same thing. I can go here, highlight the text, click control C like cat on my keyboard. That's C for copy. Switch back to PowerPoint, press control V like victory to paste it in. So those are two ways you can copy and paste things. So now that we have some text here, we can play around with it. So for example, 
let's say I want to highlight this sentence here or this area here I can go up here and format it I can make something bold I can double click on a single word to highlight it and click italic I can double click on a word and you'll notice that when I do it instead of going up there I can also do it right here this is something new in 2013 and here I can quickly ac access the basic formatting stuff for my text I can underline something I can go over here and have something centered which we're not going to do that one yet here I can change the text size I can indent increase the level where it goes in by indenting it or going back which you'll see more of that when we're working with the bullets I can change the font color and I can also paint an area a certain color so now that we have that figured out let's take a look at the extra formatting options that I have up here I can highlight a section and add a shadow to my text you can see it has a little shadow there now uh, I can do a strike through I can highlight something click here and it will draw a line through it over here I can go ahead and uh, actually this will look cool here I can highlight an area and increase the spacing between the individual letters so let's say if I click very loose it makes the introduction area look wider and far apart and if I make it very tight the letters will be very oops wrong area close together now this one is something you should know because I've seen people make mistakes about it before I can highlight an area go over here to this a and the uppercase and lowercase a and change it to say uppercase now all the text is uppercase and if I want to put it back to lowercase letters I can't you know retype it and then turn off the caps lock I actually have to highlight this text go up here to where it has this a the double a and change it to sentence case and that'll put it back to the way it was earlier uh, if I highlight it again let's say I highlight this section here uh, there are other options here to you know capitalize each word so now each word is capitalized things like that so you can play around with that as well um, of course we can center things I can highlight this area here go to the center justification right justification this justified is uh, where it'll make it line up on both the left and the right side this allows me to put things in columns if I wanted to uh, we'll look at that again in a second I can increase the spacing between the uh, actual paragraphs and the lines so if I highlight this section here and I say 2 it's going to increase the spacing so that there are it's double spaced basically so there you have it alright so let's go create a, another slide so I'll click new slide and we'll do two content here alright so let's create another slide this time I'm gonna create a slide that is completely blank and that's this one here so I have a blank slide and I want to add some shapes here so I can go over here and I can choose from the shapes that are showing up here or if I click this little arrow that looks like an inject button there are even more shapes that I can choose from so I can choose this heart here draw a heart I can change the color of my heart by going up here where it says uh, excuse me shape fill and I can choose the color I like so there's a whole bunch of different colors to choose from say I choose that weird yellow and then uh, I can add an outline to it which is currently green you can't quite see it but it's there uh, I can choose like a red color you can see it a bit more and I can also add some effects to it like a shadow I can add a reflection where's reflection there you are there's a reflection there I can make it look 3d and different so all kinds of cool things like that I'm gonna actually take it off 3d Oops, where am I take it off 3d here put it back to normal and then I'm gonna add a uh, bevel now let's see what that does you see it looks like it's beveled now so there are a lot of cool things you can do there feel free to play around with it uh, on the left side there are quick styles which is really useful as well 
uh, it'll quickly make it look awesome. That's how I like to put it. I mean, I could just click on this green one here and it adds added some basic effects to it for me and made it look good quickly without me having to go through all that stuff. So there you have that. Uh, let's say I want to make the outline a bit thicker. What would I do? Well, I go to shape outline, go down to weight, and I can choose a thicker line for my heart. Now I can't see it because right now it's on quick styles, which is changing the style of the heart. Um, but let's say I created another shape. Let's make another shape here, like a smiley face. And let's say I want to add an outline to this guy here. I'll add a black outline. And I want to make it thicker. I can go here to weight and increase the weight. Now it's a thicker outline. Uh, there are some other things. I mean, I can have it be dashed, which is kind of weird. Um, over here, I can choose from other colors that might not be showing up here. So let's say I don't like this shade of red. I want another shade of red. I can go here to more outline colors and choose, you know, a bright red or something. There you go. So real, really weird smiley face. I can go ahead and change the color of this guy here. Let's change it to something different. So now there are two different colors. And just to illustrate another point, I'm going to draw a third shape. So let's make a uh, equal sign. And I'll click and drag once again. I can change my fill to some other color. Let's make this one red or something, or orange. And uh, we'll leave the outline and stuff alone. So now I have three shapes. I can resize the shapes by clicking and dragging the anchor points, as I mentioned before. Now when I drag the corner piece, I can change the width and the height at the same time. But if I hold shift while I'm doing it, it'll keep the proportions the same. So I can't make it really skinny or really low. Like I can click and keep the proportions of the width and the height together. So you just have to hold shift for that. Uh, the other thing is you'll notice that the heart is in the back. I have the smiley face in the middle and the equal sign in the front. These are arranged so that the hearts in the back, the smiley face in the middle, and the equals, uh, the uh, divide sign, excuse me, uh, divide sign is in the front. So let's say I want the heart to be all the way in the front. Well, I can go up here to select it first of all, go up here to arrange, and say bring to front. When I click bring to front, the heart is now in front of everything. If I say arrange and send backward, it takes it all the way to the back. Did I do it? Send to back, sorry. And it goes back. Now, uh, the next thing I was going to talk about, which I accidentally clicked earlier, was what is the difference between send to back or bring to front and bring forward and send backward? Well, if I was to bring this all the way to the front, you just saw what it did. It brought it in front of the smiley face and the divide sign. But if I was to bring it forward, it would only come ahead of the smiley face, but behind the divide sign. So each time I bring it forward, it comes a step forward. If I bring it forward again, now it's in front of the divide sign. If I go a step backwards, send backward, it goes back one step. If I go backward again, it goes all the way to the back. And there's nowhere else for it to go. I can't really, sending it backward again won't do anything because it's already in the back. So that's how those work. You can also get to this arrange menu and a lot of these things by just right clicking on your shape. And you can see here I can change the fill, the outline, the style, and some other things as well. Um, I won't be able to get to, into too much in this lesson, but you can feel free to play around with these options. You can make it a link and all kinds of cool things. So, But uh, that's it for the basics. So let's move on to the next section. Let's say uh, I'm going back one slide by clicking here on my thumbnail. I am looking for a word in this slide. Uh, let's say I'm looking for... Um, Vivera. So I can go over here to find, type in Vivera, and say find next. And it'll look until it finds Vivera. So there's one Vivera there. But you know, that's not the Vivera I was looking for. I can click find next, and it will find it there as well. 
This is really useful with all of uh, the Microsoft Office products because you can easily find a section, especially if you have something big you're working on. So uh, the other cool thing I can do is I can go over here to replace and replace Vera with something else like cool. And what it can do is it, if I click replace, it'll replace the one that it's currently on. But if I click replace all, it's going to replace all of the Viveras with cool. So let's see what happens. It says we searched your presentation and made two replacements. So I click OK. And you can see that it found two cools for me here. And where was the other one? Here it is right there. So there are two cools that were replaced um, with what was there before, which was Vivera. You can also say match case. So let's say I was looking for um, a special word like um, Arsu, but I only want to find the Arsus that have a uppercase A. So I can type in capital A and say find next. And it says it can't find it. That's because the only Arsu in my presentation is right here. Where'd it go? I saw it a second ago. Uh, I lost it. I guess I'm going to have to use this. The only Arsu I have here, let's uncheck that box. There it is, is lowercase a. So that's kind of useful as well. Uh, you can have a find whole words as well. Just play around with this. This is very useful. Again, maybe not here in this presentation, but for sure, if you're creating a big um, paper in Microsoft Word, for example, that could be quite useful. OK, so that covers everything in the Home tab. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is here I can paste items, cut and copy things as well. So you know three ways now. I can copy things this way, control C on my keyboard, or right click and, well, it's trying to, uh, it's actually trying to uh, fix my spelling, but you can write, usually right, right click on things and copy them as well, just like that. So, uh, so that's it with our home tab. Let's move on to the next section. Let's talk about the design tab. This is really cool because I can change the design that I had chosen earlier in the day. So if I go here and click this little arrow, there are some uh, different designs that I can use for my presentation. So if I click here, now my entire presentation just changed. I can put it back to this one or whatever you like. And over here are the variations or the you know the colors that it uses. And you can even customize it further by clicking the little arrow and going down and choosing the color scheme that you like. Like, let's say I want to use green and yellow. There you go. So that's pretty useful as well. Um, you can add a whole bunch of fonts that are you know that will apply to the entire presentation and that's the key thing here when I change something in the design tab it's not applying it just to this uh, slide but it actually applies it to the entire presentation so if I change this to Corbet or whatever it'll change the fonts for all the slides not just the one that I was on um, there's also effects I can add effects to my slides and it'll again be copied across the board uh, there are background styles that I can choose from so there you have the design tab in a nutshell. Here you can change the uh, slide size. So um, this is a new, I believe, in 2013 as well. But here I can change it to a standard 4x3, which is kind of the old school monitors. Or I can leave it uh, widescreen here. Um, if I say uh, ensure fit, it's going to make sure that everything fits within my slide. But what it did was it also changed my graphics as well. So I didn't like that. So I'm going to undo that and have it go back to the way it was. Okay. Um, and then format background here, I can add uh, some customization to my background. Don't really want to cover it in this video, but you can add an image to your background, you know, change the gradient. A gradient is when something's fading from one color to another. So in this case, it's dark green to this light green. Uh, that's what a gradient is. And I can change that here down below. So here it's going from white to these like shades of green. I can click here on this color and change it to something else. And you can see now it's going from this darker green to this lighter green. I can change this color to, I don't know, blue. 
So you can see what it's doing there. These are the stops. When I move it, it's going to fade from this green to this green, and then from this green to this green, and this green to blue. So if I click this over, you can see the blue lasts longer. If I don't like the stop, I can just click and drag it off, and it will just disappear forever. And I can add more stops by clicking in there and changing the color to some other color. So this is going to look really ugly, but there you go. Anyways, uh, let's move on to uh, the insert tab. So let's create a new slide. And in here, I'm going to go to two content and let's make a section for diet. And in here, let's say I don't want to make bullets. I could, right? I can type in whatever I want, but I'm not going to do that. I want to erase those bullets. So I press backspace until bullet disappeared. And I'm going to go over to my site here again. Let's say I want to make a bigger paragraph. So I'll just type in maybe 100 words, generate. And I'll highlight this section, right click, copy, switch over to PowerPoint and I'm going to click this little paste button. I could have also pressed, or I could have right clicked or I could have pressed control V. So there's my little paragraph about the cat's diet. Doesn't look really good, but that'll be fine. On the right side, I can add a picture and we already know I can add online pictures here. Now let's say I look in here and let's just pretend I can't find the picture that I'm looking for. I just looked in here and the pictures just aren't what I want and I want to search online. What I can do is go over to my web browser. I'm going to create a new tab here and we're going to go to google.com and here's Google. I'm going to type in fish, press enter and so I get all the search results for fish. That's very broad I know and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to images and I can choose from any of these pictures. Now, I don't know who owns these pictures, so I don't want to um, download a picture that may be copyrighted. So what I can do is go over here to where it says search tools, and right here where it says usage rights, I can click here and say labeled for reuse. You should still be careful because it's not necessarily always right, but it's generally safer to use this because the images are labeled that they're open to be used outside of you know the site that they're on. So I'm going to go ahead and use this picture here and once I click it I see a preview of it here and I'm going to go over here to the right and click view image so I can see the actual image. When I click view image it'll open it up in the same tab and this is the actual picture. You'll notice there's a plus sign. If I click here, I can actually zoom in. This is the actual size of the image. If I click it again, it'll zoom back out. So it looks like it's pretty good quality. I can right click the image and go to save image as. I could also copy and paste the image, but I'll show you the advantage of saving the image here in just a second. So I'm going to save the image. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to put this on my desktop for the time being. So I'll save it there. I'm going to give it a better name than that long one, so I'll just type in, you know, uh, fish.jpg. Now mine's set to show me the file extensions. Yours might not be. You don't have to put the .jpg there. I can click Save. And I'm going to go back to PowerPoint. <clears throat> now what I can do is click here where I have uh, this little pictures icon and go to my desktop go down to fish, double click it, and it sized the fish for me automatically. So the fish fits in that little content placeholder that was there earlier. Now let me undo that and let's say I had gone to a copy image. If I copy it, it's copying it in the computer's memory and I can paste it by pressing control V or paste. Well when I do that you can see that it's not sized correctly. So I could go in and resize it, but it's a better idea just to go ahead and delete that and insert it from my desktop. So you'll notice that when I on this picture, uh, this little tab appears here called Format. 
Now this is really awesome. First, if I click off of the picture, format disappears. And when I'm on the picture or any of these objects that you saw from earlier, uh, when I select it, format appears and I can do all kinds of really awesome things to my picture. Right here where it says picture styles, I can choose one from the list. And this is really awesome because it made it look 3D for me. And there's a whole bunch of them here. You can play around with them. If I want to reset it to normal, to the way it was when I first started out, I can go over here to where it says reset picture and it's going to remove all those formatting things that were there before. I can also add a border myself. I can add some effects. These are really neat. I can add a shadow or let's say I want to add a reflection. I can click on that little long reflection there. So now my fish has a reflection. I can move it around, which is kind of neat. Uh, all kinds of cool things there. Uh, I can go over, well, let's skip that for now. Uh, over here under uh, change picture, if I click there, I can replace the picture with something else on my computer or from clip art. I can also right click the picture and change the picture as well. Uh, so those are some of the general things you can do. I can arrange it. Let's say I want this to go behind the text. I can go over here and click send backward until it goes behind the text or just say send to back just like we learned before. Uh, so I can rotate it. If I click up here I can rotate it by degrees. I can flip it or when I select it I can go right here to the top and rotate it myself. I can also resize it once again. I'm going to undo that. Just press Control Z there. I can also uh, hold Shift and click and drag to resize the image. If I don't hold Shift, it's going to change the proportions, or it usually does. It looks like it doesn't actually. Great. Okay. Uh, but I can change the proportions this way. Squish it. So let's undo that. So next, let's talk about this Insert tab right up here. Now, the Insert tab allows me to insert a new slide. I can do it from here or from home, like we saw earlier. I can insert a table. I can insert pictures, online pictures. The difference is here, if I insert a picture, it's just going to insert it just like before. So let's say I click online pictures, I type in fish, press enter, and let's say I want to use this fish here. Oh, there's one with a cat. This might work. Click insert there. There is my cat thinking of the fish. See, it's not in a text box like this one was. This is just the picture. So uh, I have to resize it myself. So that's what would happen if you insert a picture from insert rather than clicking the little icon inside the content placeholder that comes with the slide. So uh, I could do a screenshot where I can go to screen clipping and this is really neat because what I can do is uh, click and drag my mouse and what it does is it inserts a picture of what I just dragged over. So that's really cool. Um, and there are a whole bunch of uh, shapes you can add. Smart art, which we saw earlier, is really useful as well. So I can, let's make a new slide and I'll show you that one and let's delete this. I'm just going to click it and press delete on my keyboard to get rid of that and get rid of this cat here. And let's uh, insert a new slide from the insert tab. And let's say I just want to create a blank slide. And I'm going to go to the insert tab and click smart art. And this is really cool. I can like click on, let's say picture caption list and it will add these in here for me and I can type in captions for each of them some caption something else more still the end so uh, I can type those in there and then click on these little pictures and add pictures to them let's add that same cat there and you can see that I have a picture of my fish inside the little text box. So it can make your presentation look very cool. So I'd encourage you to play around with the, the flow charts and things that they have here because they can be quite useful. So let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to actually delete this slide. Press the delete key. I selected it. And you can, by the way, if I didn't mention that earlier in this video, I can actually select the thumbnail and delete the entire slide 
or if I wanted to delete a specific section, I can click that and press delete on my keyboard. If I want to delete an entire text box here, if I press delete right now, it's going to delete the individual words. But if I press, if I click on the outline of the text box and then I press delete, it will then delete the entire text box for me. So I'm going to undo that though, because we're going to need that there. So let's uh, move on and take a look at some transitions and animations for our slide and see what we can do with those. So let's make another slide. Uh, we'll just do a slide with two content. And here uh, we'll just write, you know, whatever habitat or whatever is fine. And in here I would write, you know, my text for their habitat, home, oh, you know, uh, bus stop. I'm just kidding. Uh, but, you know, you can write whatever you want there. And on the right side, let's say I want to add some images, but I don't want a single image. I want, well, actually, let's go back, let's slow down here. So let's go ahead and insert a new slide. Oh, so let's say I want to make transitions between my slides. If I run my show right now, if I go to slideshow and I click from beginning, here I have my first slide, you know, I can click the next button or any button on my keyboard, it goes to the next slide. Again, I can click anywhere and it's going to move on to the next slide. If you need to go back, you can go right down here. So let's say I want my slides to transition from one to the other. For example, if I go to the cat and I want to have this first slide uh, start out, you know, with curtains, I can do that. Oh, wait, I need to be on hold. So let's say I want to have my slides transition from one to the other with a really neat animation. Well, all you need to do is go to the slide you want to add the transition to, go up to the top where it says transitions, and choose the transition you want. For example, let's say I wanted to open up like uh, curtains. Well, I can go to the uh, slide, uh, the transition called curtains, which is right here, and it'll start the presentation like this. Now let's say when it goes to the overview, I want it to, uh, let's say, glitter. And it'll do that transition. I don't know, that didn't really look like glitter to me, but that's fine. Uh, I can go to the next one, and let's say I want this one to fracture. And it looks like it breaks. And this one, we'll go ahead and choose. Um, there was a really cool box, it's kind of cool. And it'll go from one to the other. So there's a whole bunch of them. Play around with it. You know, uh, less is more with these things, but have fun. Uh, if I click the preview button, it previews uh, the uh, transition for me, but it does it automatically as well. Uh, you can add a sound here as well. I can go here and choose some sound like, you know, drum roll or something. If I click preview. There's my sound effect. Uh, hopefully that sound effect will come when I render this video. If it doesn't, you, you should have heard the drum roll. Uh, I can click, if I click this box, I had accidentally unclicked it earlier, but uh, when this is clicked, if I want to go to the next slide, I have to actually click my mouse. If I uncheck that, then it won't allow me to click my mouse to advance to the next slide. So uh, that's, that's the basic idea behind all this stuff. Um, with the transitions. Now before I get into more complex animations, I do want to show you one other thing. Let's preview our show now. I'm going to go ahead and add transitions to all these. So I'm going to click the first one, hold shift, click the last one, and that's going to highlight all of them. If I want to select individual ones, I can hold control on my keyboard and uh, or on a Mac you would hold uh, the Apple button and it will let me select individual slides, but I want to select all of them. So I click the first one, hold shift, click the last one, select all of them, and I'm going to have all of them, you know, transition with blinds. And I want to run my show. So I'm going to go to slideshow, I can press F5 or just click play from beginning. By the way, if you want to play from the current slide, you would just click there. Let's say I want to start from here. So that could be useful if you need to stop your slideshow for something for your class and you want to resume from where you left off, you would click that. But let's start it from the beginning. All right, so here's my slideshow. So what we're looking at right now is kind of a hybrid of what's called the presenter's view and the uh, 
the view that the, the actual presentation that the audience sees. Uh, I say that because down below I have these tools and I would show it like this if I had my laptop and everybody's just staring at my laptop. But usually your setup is different. Usually you would have your laptop connected to some kind of projector and the people are watching it on the projector while you are presenting from your laptop. So uh, to illustrate that way that would look, I'm going to go down here to this little menu and choose show presenter view. Now this is what you would see if you had two screens. You would see this on your laptop while everyone else would see this. While I'm in the presenter's view, it's really cool because I can have notes and I'll show you where to add those in a minute. So while you're presenting, you can seamlessly talk about your subject and uh, have your bullets or your notes right here for you. It shows you the current slide, that, which is what everybody's looking at, but it also previews the next slide for you. The audience wouldn't see that. Uh, I can click next. It'll go to the next slide for me and uh, all that good stuff. The other cool thing is here, I have these tools. I can use the laser pointer, which allows me to just show people things as I'm talking about them. I can use the pen to circle things. I can use the uh, highlighter to highlight things, highlight information. Now, my mouse is off right now. I think it's because of my recording software, but normally wherever you see the cursor is where it would highlight. Um, I can erase you know, what I've drawn by clicking it. I can erase all of the ink on the slide to remove all of it. Uh, over here, I can see all of my slides at a glance and quickly jump to a different slide. I can zoom in on a section for my audience. And then if I want to zoom back out, I can click here or press escape on my keyboard. Uh, here, I can click this to blank out the screen. Let's say you just want to make the screen go black for a second while you're talking about something else. You can click there and bring it back that way. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the uh, normal view. This is what the audience would be seeing. So again, normally if you have two screens, you have your laptop and then your projector, automatically you would see the presenter view yourself while the audience sees this. Uh, let's go ahead and end the show. The shortcut is escape on your keyboard. So we've learned about those transitions and in case I didn't show that earlier, uh, again, I can click on transitions and you can see all the cool transitions there. So uh, the last thing I want to talk about in this lesson is a little bit more about animations. We've kind of already added some animations by adding transitions. But let's say I want to animate these things coming in. Let's say I want the heart to come in first. I want to talk about the heart. Then I want the uh, smiley face to come in. Then I want the uh, divide sign to come in. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to go over here to the far uh, or the middle where it says animations. And it's easy enough just to add a simple animation. I can just click the item I want to add an animation to and select from these or go uh, click that little eject button and choose any of these. Now they're broken up into four basic categories. I always look at them as three but there are four. There's entrance which is uh, the way the object comes in. There is emphasize which you can use these animations to emphasize something as you're talking about it. You can have it exit. This is the way it would leave the screen. And you can have it go on a path, like I can have it follow a zigzag path or follow a line. So we're going to look at all of these in just a second. Let's say I want it to uh, bounce in. Let's see if bounce is in here. There it is, bounce. And what will happen is the heart's going to bounce in, just like that. Now, the thing is, I want the heart to bounce in, and then I want to talk about the heart and then I want the heart to go away. And then I want the smiley face to come in. And then the same thing with the divide sign. How do I do that? Well, for that, we're going to need this thing here, the animation pane. If I click this, it's going to activate this animation pane for me. If I click it again, it goes away. If I click it, it comes back. So far, uh, well, here it's going to list all of the animations in order. The first animation I have is this heart, which is this thing here. It shows up right there. If I want to add an animation, 
I'm going to go here to where it says add animation. I click here and let's say I want to emphasize the heart while I talk about it. I can click teeter or grow shrink. Grow shrink is kind of cool. We'll choose grow shrink. And it's automatically set to grow. So if I play it from the beginning, uh, actually it played from there. I'm going to play from the beginning. I'll click the first one, click play from. The heart will bounce in and then it's going to grow. Well, let's say I want it to grow more or less or maybe make it shrink. What I can do is click this little arrow, go down to effect options, and change the effect settings for grow shrink. Right now, it's going to grow to 150%. I can have it grow bigger, let's say huge. Now it's going to grow to 400%. Let's see what that does. Holy cow, that's pretty big. So you can do all kinds of cool things. I don't want to take too much of your time in this lesson, but basically you can choose from all the different sizes here or specify the percentage here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep it at larger. I can also have it play a sound for me. There are some pre-made sounds here. And uh, let's say I want uh, arrow. Click OK. And it made a little sound and it grew. Now, the other thing is, how is this going to look in my presentation? Well, let's go to Slideshow and say, play from current slide. There's my slide. Now, you'll notice the heart's not here. Why? Because I have to click my mouse for it to come in. If I click again, it's going to grow and play the sound. Let's escape. What if I don't want to click for the heart to come in? What if I just want it to come in automatically right off the bat? If I go to that first animation, click there, and say with previous or after previous, it'll start the animation right away. The difference between these two is this. If I say start with previous, the previous animation is the slide itself, the blinds. Right when it appears, it's going to show the heart come in. You can see it right now. If I say after, it'll play it after previous. Now, I can't tell the difference here because it doesn't really matter. There's no animation before this. So as soon as I run it again, it'll look the same way. Now, let's say I want the uh, smiley face to bounce in next. It's already there, but if I was to click it, and then go to animations, click add animation, and say bounce in for this one. Now when I start my show, the smiley face won't be there. The heart appeared. I can click anywhere on my slideshow. The heart expands. I click again. Now the smiley face comes in. I think you're starting to get the picture. Now I can add another animation. Let's say I want to emphasize the smiley face. I would go to animations. I would go to add animation. And I would click on, let's say, teeter for this guy. And he'll just teeter there for me. Again, I'm going to have it. Uh, so right now, the first one comes in automatically. You can see it says one, two, three. That's the first click, second click, and third click. I'm going to go ahead and add an animation for my divide sign as well. I'm going to go here to add animation, have that one maybe uh, spin in. Let's see, where's spin or swivel? I guess that's fine. We'll have it swivel in, and we'll emphasize that one as well. So I'll go to add, let's click it, add animation there. And let's say for this one, we'll have it uh, pulse. And uh, let's play it and take a look. So far, it's going to take five clicks to go through this entire slide. There's one came in automatically. I click, play the sound, click again, the smiley face comes in, click again, it's going to teeter or uh, swivel, I think is what I had chosen. Uh, this one, oh, that was tweeter, twi uh, and this one is swivel. I'm going to click again, and it's going to pulse. I click again, it goes to the next slide. Now, as a last part of this animation section, let's say I want to have the heart come in, grow, and then disappear after I'm done talking about it before the smiley face comes into play. 
here's what I would do. I'd click on the heart. I would go to animations. Go over here to add animation and choose one of these exit ones. Let's say I want it to bounce out. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and choose this bounce. And there it goes. It's bouncing away and it falls down. So it did that, but the problem is it's going to do it at the very end, and that's totally wrong. I mean, I can show you what it'll look like, but it's going to look kind of silly. Uh, let's see. If I go here, I run my show, I click here, that comes in, I click that, click again, and then if I click again, now it's going to bounce out. Well, that's not quite what I wanted. Let's go back. What I do want to happen is for it to bounce out right after I'm done talking about it. So I can click and drag this up at the heart section so that the heart bounces in. I click it to expand on it and then I click again to make it hide out. Now it's going to look a little bit weird because I think when I resized it, it may uh, mess the animation up a little bit, but you'll get the basic idea. So let's take a look. If I go to from current slide, heart bounces in. I click again it expands. I click again, it disappears. And I click again, and the smiley face comes in. Now, again, because uh, I had added this size thing here, it messed the animation up a little bit. What I would probably do in this case is have it size back down to the normal size it's supposed to be. And that should solve that problem. Um, I'm not going to do it here. But you know, if you're interested in knowing that, basically I would just click it, you know, add another animation uh, with the grow shrink. Um, that's the wrong one. Where to go? Grow shrink here. And in here, I would go ahead and shrink it down back to 100%. So since I already did it, I might as well just do it now. Uh, let's go to effect options. I'm going to have it go back to 100%. So we're just going to type in 100 there manually. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to put this right here. Actually, I think 100% is not going to do the trick. I have to go lower. So I have to do a little bit of math now that I think about it because uh, it's going to be 100% of what it was when it was big. So actually, I'm going to click smaller, and that should do the trick. I might go a little bit too small. So I think 75% would be about right. discover this one together uh, okay so and uh, that's it uh, yeah so let's see what that does and we're gonna do one more thing with it now that I already went through the, the, the trouble of doing that so it came in it grew I click it again it shrinks down okay looks good so far and it bounces out still a little messed up but I think you get the picture by the way I had to click to make it shrink and then leave what I could do is have it leave right after it's done shrinking. So if I click on this little arrow and click after previous, right as soon as it's done shrinking, it'll disappear. So let's take a look at that. Bounces in automatically. I click, grows, click again, it shrinks, and it bounces off on its own. Again, the size is off a little bit, but that's fine for this lesson. Okay, and uh, that's it. I can do the same thing to this guy here. Let's say I want to have him disappear as well. I click him just to review. Go to anima uh, yeah, animations, and under animations, I'll click add animation. Choose some exit. Let's have it fly out this time. And I'll drag this up to the point in time where I want it to leave. And it's already set to be on click. So I'll leave that there, uh, and that's it. One other thing I didn't mention yet is the timing. If I click here, uh, I can again change whether it starts on click with previous or after previous. I can ask it to delay how long I want it to stay on the slide. So if I say, you know, after previous, and I have a delay, for example, uh, it'll stay on that animation and then leave automatically. So if you practice a lot with your presentation and that's really useful too because things look even more seamless uh, but that's basically it there um, I won't go into any more details than that uh, for this lesson 
So I think that's pretty much everything I did want to cover. Uh, the only thing I didn't cover that I think might be useful for you to know as well is how to add a video. Um, let's say I wanted to add a video to my presentation. I can delete what was in that content placeholder and click on video here or go to insert and uh, click video here. Now these uh, usually insert videos from your PC. So if you're inserting a YouTube video, there's a bit more legwork to that, but that is possible. I won't cover it in this video lesson. I might cover that in a separate lesson. Um, but there's also ways you can download the video from YouTube as well. Just keep in mind uh, copyrights for any of those videos that you include in your presentations. Uh, again, I can cover that in a separate video. But if I was to click on video here and say video from my PC, uh, it'll open my video library, or in this case my downloads folder, but uh, I can go to my video library and insert a uh, video from here. So let's go to sample videos. There should be something in here. Insert it in there. And there's my video. I can preview it here by clicking play. And I can uh, do the same thing in the slideshow. So that's it. That's all the general stuff with a little bit of uh, advanced technique using PowerPoint. The rest is up to you. Just sit down and practice. Have fun with it. PowerPoint can be a really, really great tool, uh, both for learning and for presentations in general. So. Uh, have some fun with this and think of some creative ways on how you can incorporate this into your presentations and your lessons. I'll see you next time.